Kiana Underwood. Welcome to my new series, The Art of Flowers with Tulipina. Over the past year, I've received many requests from a lot of you for online classes, and finally I got my act together and came up with this series. Um, it's meant to be an ongoing series to give you a window into my regular life and projects and sort of give you the opportunity to ask me questions or make requests for some future episodes. For today, I want to start with my most utilized floral design tool, which is the floral pin frog, um, otherwise known as, um, or also known as uh, Kenzan. The uh, Kenzan is originally from Japan, and when I was visiting uh, a couple of months ago, I found many different, I was just, I was in heaven, and I found many different kinds of uh, Kenzan. This one is a rectangular one, which you don't really find very often here. Uh, this one has a very interesting shape and it separates. You could separate them. It's not doing a very good job right now, but it does that. Um, this one is very cool. It, you can, it's very heavy, so you don't really have to make it stick to the vase. It stands alone by itself. Um, this one is just a regular one that I found at the Flower Mart uh, floral supply shop. And so is this one. It's actually a pretty good one. It's very uh, heavy, so it makes it very um, durable, as well as keeping keeps all of the stems really well inside the vessel. And so the way I um, make sure that my frog is basically stable inside my vase is uh, with floral putty. And I basically take it and wrap it around. This is one that I've used many times, but I wrap it around like this. And then you Take it like this and put it. I've done one today already, but you basically make sure that your vessel is dry, otherwise, it won't stick to your vessel. And you put it inside the vessel and you twist it and push it down and make sure that it's well inside the frog and it's not going to be lopsided. So this is basically how I do it. And it's, I use it for, I would say, 85% of my arrangements. And I love it. And I can reuse it. And it's environmentally friendlier than the foam. And um, base, oh, many of you have asked me about how I clean it and how I prevent it from rusting. I basically, every time I use it, I take it out, I rinse it, and then I put it upside down on a paper towel like this and let it dry and it lasts a very long time for me. So there's that. For today's arrangement, as I said, I've already created, uh, made this, uh, I put it inside my vessel, and I'm just gonna put this aside. And before I start inside the vessel, I just wanna show you how um, it would look basically if you if you didn't have a vessel how it would look for you to begin an arrangement and of course i start with my heavier elements and the heavier elements in this recipe are my kumquats and um, clementines so i'm going to start and these are what make will make the base of my arrangement and so this one is not so good looking but you essentially start by cutting it in an angle slightly and then you put it in the center and you push it slightly down like this. So push it to the side and that way it doesn't stick up and it doesn't look so stiff and it, has, it adds more movement to your arrangement. So I'm going to start doing that now with this. First I will put water. I will put this first stem branch right inside the middle of the frog, and then I push it down a little bit. I'm just 
just gonna look for other ones. One over here, the same, push it down a little. And you want to make sure that it's all even, otherwise it'll, it'll fall apart as you start to put in your flowers. So you put it all the way around, as well as inside the floral pin frog. And then push it down a little bit. I'm gonna look for some good ones here. Just gotta clean up a little as you go along. There's that. Another one on this side. Some of the heavier one will sit further down which is fine because it'll give you more dimension to your arrangement. Snip a little bit. I'm just gonna see what I've done in the front here. I wanna make sure I have that beautiful line of colorful clementines in the front. And this one is giving it a little bit of height, which is great. This one is pretty thick. I'm gonna try, try it. Let's see how it goes. I like the color of the compliments in this one. I also like to have them sit in different spots of the vase. So if I have some all down here, it would be nice to have a couple up there, just so you can say, look, there's a clementine hanging up over there. So it's in, but I'm not feeling completely secure about it, so I think I'll move it. I don't necessarily need it. Especially when you're thinking about transportation, you wanna make sure everything is securely inside your frog. And this one. One more. And I'm just gonna go all the way around until I feel like we've got a good number of clementines everywhere. Pretty good. A little bit more over there, and I think I'm done. Right here. And so there's a pretty good disbursement of clementine branches all over my frog and vessel at the moment. One last one. And there it is. And because it's a centerpiece, I don't really think about front and back, although there's always a little bit, you know, more of a front to all of my arrangements, but everything will look beautiful by the time I'm done with it on all sides. It won't look exactly the same, but it'll be beautiful. Then I've got some bits of Tree of Heaven here, which I think is just a beautiful color. And I sort of have this, have in mind for color this beautiful combination of distant drums, roses, um, which I brought from my garden. So I want to just continue with the color theme and this is a great co combination over here. So I'm going to use this beautiful little branch, Tree of Heaven. see what it looks like here. And 
perhaps one more on this side. Just like that. And then I'm going to just make sure that everything is looking nice and secure in there and then I'll continue. I'll look around to see what, I, what else I can add. I've got some lovely ranunculus here and ranunculus are beautiful because they're all, when you buy a bunch, they um, all have different shades. So, and as they open, their shade changes too. So I love using them. They're my favorite, one of my favorite flowers and they just last forever too. Continue with some of the ranunculus. And as you can see, I'm still pushing things down to the side, but this is sort of my shape now. It's, the movement is high over here, so there's a symmetry in my arrangement. I've got um, a focal point up here there will be focal point down here which will be the clementines and then there will be some focal flower here which i'm thinking will be the distant drums so just want to make sure it's not covering so this is a little too high i'm just gonna do another layer so it doesn't cover the kumquat too much and that's a little bit better I'm going to look for different, I have some over here, some different uh, shades of my ranunculus. This one is on its way out, so I'm just going to keep it here. But I like the ones that are pretty open because they're just so pretty. And I try to use ones that are open, some that are less open, just so I can have some variety as well as um, and the, the ones that are less open give more texture and the fluffier ones are pretty it just looks more natural one over here this is a very different shade than what we've got going on here so it's perfect i'll use it i'm just going to see where i like it it looks just fine over here i'm going to cut it a little bit shorter when flowers are bigger um generally it's better to cut them a little, if you want to see their faces and if you want them to be a kind of a focal area in your arrangement, then it's always good to cut them a little bit shorter. Most people are afraid of cutting too short. Either that or they don't, they leave things too tall. I'm gonna put this beautiful one here in the back on the other side of my arrangement. This one has a pretty movement. I'll put it right over here. Just want to make sure it's in the frog. And then I will continue. I wonder if I have more. I have some more over here. One's better. This one for the side, but slightly shorter. And you have to always trust your, your eye and your creative imagination. If it looks good to you, then chances are that you're doing something right. Trust your own instincts. And now I'm thinking this is still a little too tall. So another. And now I like this. rose all came these roses all came in one stem so I just wanted to separate them a little um, in case I wanted to use them in different heights in my arrangement so 
I'm going to put this right over here in the front. And play around a little, make sure I like where it's at. And then see about this one, whether it'd be nice to have it here in the back somewhere or would it be pretty to have it next to it? Maybe not. I think there are just at least too many of them. So I'm just gonna put one here so that the other side enjoys having this beautiful flower also. And cut it just slightly shorter. There is that. Then I have some Coco Locos from the garden that I brought. It's a good time of year for my garden. I've done, I've definitely slaved over it. Um, I plant a lot of stuff in the fall. And so in springtime, it's, it's very nice in the garden. I've got many different varieties of flowers and foliage available. And it's not a very big garden, but I like to garden. And so I, um, I, I find things that I love and I, put them in the garden and so every every square inch of my garden is filled with different flowers that I could use throughout the year. It doesn't hurt that I live in California and the weather is amazing. So put one more here but I want it slightly shorter also. here I don't usually use strippers um, thorn strippers for my roses because they I feel that they damage the stems and they make them very um, frail so I don't use it but it is harder when they're so thorny to handle. I love the movement of this one over here. It's sort of drooping and it's beautiful right next to the clementines. And then I want to use some that are not so open because that gives it a more natural look. Like this one. This one's a beautiful rose from my garden. I don't know what it is because when I moved there, it was already there and I, there was no name. And I've tried to find out what it's called, but I haven't had much luck. And now I'm gonna move back to the ranunculus a little bit for some variety. different shades. And sort of just put this one right next to the rose. Like that. I like this one. This one rose is more pink than the others. I'll put it right here. This one is really beautiful too. Fully open, but just gorgeous. I'm trying to think how I can show it off. I'll just put it on the side so that you can see it that way. Then I've got a few of one of my favorite tulips, the carrot tulips that I'm going to use. They're also droopy flowers, but usually the way my style is, I like to have flowers droop, spill out of the arrangement. So 
these give me the chance to do that. And I like them slightly opened also. They're just beautiful inside. I want this one a little bit shorter so we can see the inside of it. And this one also on this side, right in between the kumquats. Then I'm just gonna look, examine some more and see what else I need. Maybe a little bit more of the rain tree. I'm sorry, tree of heaven, not rain tree. Rain tree looks a little bit like this too, but the pods are bigger. Right here. And then I'm thinking I would love to use the, the colors of these dates are beautiful and so it might be nice to add a couple here and there just for an element of uniqueness and surprise. This one. There's that right over here. Some in the back. And one. Let's see, over here, over here, yeah. Right in the front, next to the roses, it complements those colors so beautifully. And then I've got a few other things uh, that I want to add. So it'll, I want to add poppies. I love poppies. They're such happy flowers and they add some, so much beauty to your arrangement. I like to use them whenever I can. So I will use one maybe on this side. This is a beautiful color. Look at the edges of the petals. Definitely want to show this one off. I'll put it like so over here. Maybe one slightly shorter. And it could go right down here. I have some coleos that I brought in from the garden. Beautiful color combination. I love the back of it, it's so pretty. So I'm going to use some coleos right down here. One more in the back. A little bit of this black chervil that is also from my garden down here. And that complements the back color, the back side of the leaves of the coleos. Whenever you take something out of the frog, before you put it back in again, you wanna make a quick snip. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time putting it back in there securely.
One more over here in the back. There it is. And then at my final touch, I'm just gonna look around and make sure not, there's no empty weird spots inside my arrangement. And I'm gonna use this lovely thing that I grew inside my, um, it's called Lavender Mist and it's, um, in my, it's been growing since September in my garden. So it's in my annuals box and I just love the way it looks and it's so delicate. And I think it adds a beautiful touch to this arrangement. gives it some some more height on the side and then I'm going to add one more little flower over here it's poppy and there it is final look. I'm just going to go around and do this. And here's my very first arrangement for my series. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and getting some insight into how I do what I do with floral design. Thank you for watching.